Well, joining me live is World Vision CEO Daniel Wordsworth um, for more on this. Daniel, thank you for your time today. I wish it was under better circumstances. Certainly, Holly. Thank you for having me. Um, I mean, you've worked yourself in conflict mm. zones for 30 years. Yeah. Um, how did you feel hearing this news? Well, first, can I just say uh, how heartbreaking this is for her family, how heartbreaking this is for her colleagues. I've lost colleagues myself in similar circumstances and it stays with you the rest of your life. And so, I mean, I lost sleep over it. I know how difficult it is for everybody that's connected to this. Um, so, you know, we struggle through, or they struggle through, really. I mean, when we talk about humanitarian aid workers, they're putting their own lives on the line yeah. to go into these dangerous situations, which you know all too well, um, to supply food. Food is being used as a prop in the war here, essentially. Mm. Um, are we doing enough to keep our aid workers safe? Well, I can say, I can assure you that the NGOs involved, like World Central Kitchen or World Vision, we surround our aid workers with as much safety as we possibly can and we manage the risk in, a, in quite a strict way. Uh, you have um, security teams with you, you coordinate the aid that's being delivered, your vehicle and you yourself are clearly marked as a humanitarian worker. So I know the aid workers themselves are doing all they can. But in the end, we rely on the actors around you to actually respect humanitarian access and let aid workers do their job and make sure the people who are suffering on the ground get food and shelter. What makes Gaza more dangerous than other conflict zones? Or, well, just give us your experience from what you've worked in. Is yeah. Gaza more dangerous? So right now I would say Gaza is incredibly dangerous for aid workers and, it's, and more than that, it's, it's, um, it's incredibly dangerous for Palestinians. Uh, for that whole region, actually. I, I, I've worked in many different conflicts in many different places, Somalia, Congo, El Salvador, Colombia, in Afghanistan, actually. Normally in environments like this where you have... Con I was just in Ukraine last week. Normally in conflicts like this, the conflict is spread out over quite a large distance. In Ukraine, actually, it's over many, many miles. The front line spreads over many miles, the entire border area of Ukraine and Russia. But here in Gaza, you have a real intensity. You have a high... It's a high-density population. These are, these are large cities, families crammed into houses. You have over a million people who have already moved from the north, northern part of Gaza into the southern. So it's incredibly crowded. It's um, very dense. And so, therefore, any kind of attack in that area is going to impact civilians. Yeah, it's an incredibly tight um, space, as yeah. you mentioned there, which makes mm -hmm. it incredibly dangerous. Right. Um, what does this mean, in your perspective, from other aid workers who are in Gaza at the moment, but also potentially were planning on going into Gaza yeah. to give humanitarian aid? How does this impact that? Well, well, Central Kitchen's really been leading the way in many ways, and they've paused their operation. So something like this causes every agency to put a pause on their operations because we don't want to put our staff at risk. I mean, you... These pe people like these aid workers who lost their lives, they, I, I know these type of people. I don't know these people, but I know, I'm, I'm of them. Mm. So we love this job. It's a privilege to do this. You, it's more like a personal mission and you're dying to get into that place and do something good. But you, it shouldn't cost you your life to do that. Mm. And so I think this is an opportunity right now. It's an opportunity. Our Prime Minister is taking some great leadership on this to say, we've got to create humanitarian access. We have to have a, this ceasefire and we need aid workers to be able to get to this civilian population and not lose their lives doing it. Mm. I can actually feel the passion in your eyes yeah. and see it as well mm. and how much this impacts you and because it's what you do as well. Yeah. Um, we do have to wrap things up, but do you have a message for the victim's family here in Australia? Oh. I, I, would, I, I would just say they know. She was doing what she loved. She was doing what she loved and she wanted to be there. I just know she wanted to be there. So she shouldn't have to have paid this way but she was doing what she loved. Daniel Wordsworth, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Good. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ali.